How's your energy, Southern Arizona? It's now time for the highly acclaimed, much anticipated Friday football fever. Good evening to you. I'm Paul C. Culler. And I'm David Kelly. And Paul, boy, oh boy, <laughs> do we have a big night ahead of us. Regional rivalries galore. You got Pueblo and Choya. They're going to duke it out on the south side while they also dedicated a new stadium to that special guy, longtime coach Curly Santa Cruz. And speaking of Santa Cruz and Santa Cruz County. Don't forget about the battle for borderland yeah. bragging rights as Nogales hosts Rio Rico in a matchup that brings thousands of fans from both Arizona and Sonora, Mexico. Absolutely. But Paul, let's begin with our game of the week, our Marana Pumpkin Patch Festival <laughs> game of the week. Yeah. Canyon Del Oro Push Ridge. They're separated by less than a mile. It's a budding regional rivalry in the making. Second ever meeting and on a night when they welcomed home the 2009 state champions, no Stevie Rocker tonight. Of course, he's still out with that injury, but that 2009 squad had Kareem Carey and Jared Tevis among those. Montana Newsteader ready for a big night. The first big play, though, came from the kids on the north side. How about Bryce Jewell there? He's just a ninth grader snuffing out that bubble screen. But then it was Newsteader's turn. He's going to find some space in the middle, and he is gone all the way to the house for a seven zip Dorado's lead. But get this, he doesn't just do it on offense, he does it on defense. He got fireworks over his CDO. How about this right here? It is gonna be a beautiful interception by Newstetter to kill a Lions opportunity. That's early in the second quarter there. CDO then will turn that into points. Alex Maldonado is gonna get the step up into the end zone here. He's gonna have a lot of dances. It's homecoming this weekend, and to find out who the king and the queen is, you're gonna have to go to the dance. More fireworks. CBO wins this one, 21-0. I see you showing up in a tux, my friend. All right, another regional matchup, the Northeast Siders, Sabino, Catalina Foothills, and this is the Falcons band that'll be performing in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You can catch it right here on KVOA. Into the first quarter we go, and how about Sabino quarterback, A.J. Skaggs about to find Michael Masunas, and check this out. He'll just get a toe in the end zone. The Sabercats lead 7-0. Into the second quarter we go. Photos quarterback Connor Smith will connect with Derek Williams. 43 yards later, it'll be a tie, game-tying touchdown, but Sabino High School gets the ball right back. And how about Daniel McAllister about to be doing it and doing it and doing it well. The Catalina Foothills defenders are finally able to get him down, but not without a fight. That was a 10-yard pickup, and then Skaggs will finish things off by bearing, airing it out to a wide-open Dawson Zorik. Sabino takes the 14-7 lead and holds on for the 20-14 victory. All right, Paul, Ironwood Ridge looking for their second win under new head coach James Hardy, hosting a team from the Valley in Campo Verde. This game did not start well up on the ridge. Nighthawks down 21-0 at the half, but Hardy's boys found their groove. Third quarter, Coyotes driving for another score, but Damian Solis jumping routes and headed the other way. Solis hoping to make it a pick six, but he would be chased down at the 20-yard line. Ironwood Ridge, though, on Ridge in business. Now, how about Brandon Berrios? He is running hard here inside the red zone all the way to the doorstep. And that would leave it up off the beautiful play fake here. Fabian Figueroa gets the glory. The Nighthawks back to within a score, but that was as good as it got. The Coyotes would add another tally, and they hand the Nighthawks a second straight defeat. 28-14, the final tonight. The Ridge losers. Hey, thanks a lot, David. One of the oldest rivalries in Tucson takes place on the south and west side every year. I'm talking about Pueblo and Troya High School. This year, it all go down at Pueblo High School off of 12th Avenue. Thought you knew. But the boys in light blue Pueblo hoping to remain unbeaten this young season, but Troya was gunning for a big upset. Let's head on out to Saturnino Curly Santa Cruz Stadium. Yep, you heard me right. The new Pueblo High School Stadium was named after the longtime coach earlier this evening. We'll have more on that a bit later. Meanwhile, Pister Middle School kids got the chance to lead the football team onto the field. Pister, of course, is one of the feeder schools to Pueblo. And Coach Brandon Sanders and the Pueblo football team would be getting pumped up. Let's get things going on the kickoff. And for some reason, Troya's Moses Nelson goes down awkwardly. Check it out, he grabs his right leg. This without even being hit by a Pueblo defender. That was the first action of the game. There'd be a long delay as trainers tended to Moses. And it was a scary moment because the Tucson Fire Department and paramedics, they will be called out to the field at this point. No update 
on Moses Nelson's status. Unfortunately, we didn't get any highlights because of the long game delay. Moses Nelson definitely in our prayers for a speedy recovery. We will keep you updated on his status. And as for the game itself, Coach Sanders and Pueblo hoping to remain unbeaten, and they do. Last check, or it looks like last check they were leading 18-15. Pueblo up. All right, from the south side, let's head on out to the far reaches of eastern Pima County where Cienega is hosting Peoria, Arizona's Centennial High School. Let's send things over to David Kelly. Yeah, Paul, it's no secret the defending 4A state champion Peoria Centennial, Centennial Squad ranks up there as one of the best football teams in the state. Cienega heading into the game with a 1-1 one one record, and as is the case for Centennial, their lone loss. How about to national powerhouse Santa Ana Modern Day from Southern California? They are ranked number three in the nation. The Cienega cheerleaders always getting you excited out there in Vail. Early on, Dylan Miller going for the deep ball, and he has got that one. That's Dylan Miller with the catch from Jonathan Morris. And a touchdown for Centennial. After the three and out, Centennial is going to get the ball. Now Elijah Brooks, and he's going to make some Bobcats miss. Finds the sideline, and he is gone. Elijah Brooks going all the way for the touchdown. Centennial starting to pull away at this point. And then again, it's going to be Jonathan Morris giving it off to Mark Jacob. But Jacob gets stripped by Isaiah Webb, and Isaiah Webb heading the other way for a touchdown. What a nice play there by Isaiah. It was a long night, though, for the boys from Vail. Sienega loses big tonight, 38-14. to 14. Hey, the regional rivalry roundup continues, this time along the U.S.-Mexico border. That's where Nogales High School was hosting Rio Rico High School. It was a battle for borderland bragging rights as both schools from Santa Cruz County with smack helmets and a highly anticipated showdown in the crazy AZ. Southern AZ, that is, as the Nogales High fans were going crazy. Let's not forget it is a crazy night. It is Friday the 13th with a full moon. <laughs> All right, maybe I should save that for Halloween. Meanwhile, check out Pedro Rodriguez hit Richard Hamlin out of the backfield, and that, folks, will end up being a first down, and it sets up a field goal, right? So, I don't know, check it out in. Ouch, could be considered a blooper, at least according to the Rio Rico High School student body. They'd have some fun with it, but after that, it is redemption time for the boys from Nogi. How about Aaron Lopez breaking off a little? So, so, he will make his way into the end zone in slow mo. Nogales takes the lead in the battle in Santa Cruz County. Nogales wins. 17 to 14. So Coach Steachea and Nogales remain unbeaten this young season and will now travel to Walden Grove next week in Sawadita. Meanwhile, Rio Rico travels to Casa Grande. Hey, we're far from over with after the break. More high school football. Flowing Wells would host Amphi High School as the Caballeros were gunning for their first victory of the season. Plus, we have more on Pueblo's stadium dedication to Saturino Curly Santa Cruz. David will have all that and more in the play of the night as well as the Friday football fever rolls on. Hey, welcome back to the Friday Football Fever. How's your energy, my high school football fans? I'm Paul C. Carla, David Kelly, standing by. But first, quick reminder, you can see all of the scores for all the big games on our ticker right below. And we'll have full rundowns on KVOA.com. But for now, let's get back into it, shall we? And got to love the passion of the Flowing Wells student section. Get the Caballero football team pumped up against Amphi High School. Let's pick things up in the first half. And off of the exchange from Austin Spivey to John Thompson and Fumble! When everything is said and done, Amphi recovers it and the Panthers are in business. After that, check out Isaiah Hill about to be carrying the ball forward for Amphi for a decent gain. Getting down there and after that, how about Kiko Trejo with the ball for Amphi. Making it happen, Captain. Trejo will break a number of tackles and almost break one all the way, but no worries for Amphi because a couple plays later, Kevin Silva is about to find Julian Campos. And after bobbling the ball a bit, he'll recover and score a touchdown. Ampai leads 7-0. Still, the Flowing Wells Caballero cheerleaders remain pumped up and on the ensuing kickoff. Look at the field! Because Flowing Wells dodges a bullet. Philip Parham isn't able to control the ball, but it'll end up out of bounds. We're still waiting for a final score. Actually, we just got a final score. Ampai wins 26 
to two. And moving on from the game field itself to the fans in the stands in Pueblo High School's newly dedicated stadium, let's send things over to our very own David Kelly. Thanks, Paul. A lot of great things going on over at Pueblo. Football coaching great Saturnino Curly Santa Cruz coached Pueblo High for parts of two decades, but he's also served as a valuable educator and role model to scores of students on the South Side. And now the Tucson Unified School District is honoring Saturnino Curly Santa Cruz with the dedication of the stadium in his name. The ceremony went down earlier tonight before the kickoff of the game against Choya. Coach Santa Cruz headed up the Pueblo High program from 1980 to 95, and he is a graduate of that school back in 1962. So good to see him getting those props. Yeah. And hey, it's that time of the night. It always goes so fast when we have to say goodbye. Week number four of the 2019 Friday Football Fever is now in the books. And to my partner in crime, David Kelly. Hey, great to have you on the team, my friend. Great to be here, Paul. Let's look forward to week number five. All right, we'll see you next week. Tune in to KVUA.com. Hey, 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 hey.